extension of days. He deserves all the other glory and praise. Glory and praise for his grace. Sunday, and I am your radical prophet, Dwayne Omar. Amen. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Go ahead and post your city. We see you, we hear you. Let's go ahead. Amen.
name of Jesus and I'm about to bring you the word. Amen, amen, amen. Bless you, Jesus. I guess it's time to get another keyboard. I'm wearing them out over here, cutting off on me. That's all right. It ain't going to stop this word. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. 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 I'd rather I'd rather them wear out than rust out. Amen. Amen. If you came for the word, go ahead and post preach prophet. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Jesus. Oh, no, no, I'm going in, I'm going in. And if you don't want to Post something that long as post. Go in, prophet. Amen. Amen. For those of you that have not yet represented your city, go ahead and post your city. Amen. But it's a blessing in the obedience to a prophetic instruction. You're looking past the man and you're looking at the God in the man. Amen. God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that everyone that came to receive something from you, they get exactly what they need. So use my vocal cords to speak through, use my mind to think through in the name of Jesus. And give them what they need, if, even if I didn't declare it or call it out, Father. Let them still hear it in Jesus' name. For you are a God that does exceedingly abundant labor of all that we can ask and think. If I just asked it, you can do above that. If I just thought it, you can do above that. Amen. Go shut up, man, and keep up. Amen. This message this morning is relatable to all. Amen. Bless you. You know, there are no only ones in a family. Only one person over there has a gift. Only one of them is worth anything. Only one. There's no only ones. Because God, according to his word, assigned to all gifts. Amen. And gratuitous endowments. But in many cases, when an individual stands out uh, because uh, they start walking in their purpose early, there are signs that there are talent, that there's talent. And a lot of times, families make the mistake of cleaving to that one and abandoning the others. Oh, so and so is going to be a great basketball player. So they put their time and their resources towards that person. Amen. And, um, they tend to, um, uh, in the name of Jesus, move down the street. Um, they tend to put their time and resources into a particular person and, and leaving the others feeling neglected and feeling like they're unsupported uh, just because one started walking in their gift early. A lot of people don't know that um, uh, Michael Jordan uh, was cut from his high school basketball team. Why? Because they thought he wasn't uh, the business, they thought he wasn't talented enough, but 
that was motivation for him to go and get his grind on and practice so that he could be not just good uh, and not just practice enough uh, where uh, he wouldn't make a mistake, but practice until he couldn't make a mistake. Are you listening to me? Um, so um, there are uh, families with um, uh, uh, focus on a particular individual when everyone has gifts. Amen. Um, I know this firsthand. Uh, my first two children's mother, whose name I won't mention, um, was part of a family who had uh, a star in the family. And as a result, um, she, even though her being a little older, she felt a little neglected and she went her own way. And as a result of it, to this day, she's dealing with some things. Um, but um, it's very important that we don't isolate individuals because a sibling has a gift. Amen. Amen. Um, in rare cases, uh, you come across uh, uh, a family member who has a triple threat, like a Deion Sanders, who uh, plays well in not just major football, but also in major baseball. He played, uh, he excelled, uh, did fashion lines. Uh, but there's a cost to pay for using a gift outside of the grace of God. Are you listening to me? I, I can name several uh, famous dancers who didn't dance for the Lord, but uh, at an early age, their hips were out, or their knees were out, or their feet were out. Why? Because they were walking in the gift that God gave them, but not giving God the glory for the gift that God gave them. Is anybody in the bone? Anybody hear me this morning? Amen. So just because you can do something uh, and it appears to be successful, doesn't mean that you're in the will of God. It doesn't mean that God deems it successful because God's principle is higher. Turn to your neighbor this morning. If we were in the same room and I'd say, turn to your neighbor and say, God's gift is higher. His standard is higher. His principle is higher than just your gift. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, to Genesis 20 and 3. Oh, how I like grand grape. Amen. Genesis 20 and 3. And it reads, But God came to Abimelech in a dream one night and said to him, You are as good as a dead man. Because of the woman you have taken, she is married. God is very serious about... Um, adultery and dealing with taking someone's woman or taking someone's uh, man that he had sanctioned. Uh, he's very serious about it. He woke up a king and said, you're as good as dead. Now, I'm going to unpack this just a little bit because God didn't have to wake him up and tell him nothing. He could have just slayed him. But when he gave him the opportunity to reflect on what he had done, the man, if you know the story, you'll know that Abimelech didn't know that he had taken uh, Abram's wife. He didn't know because Abram lied and said that was his sister because he was afraid they were going to kill him. But even you can even be innocently guilty. Did you get that? You can be walking in sin because you were misled and you still, there's no excuse. Ignorance is no excuse. God's principle is higher. Where are you going with this prophet? You could be out of the will of God while other people are cheering you on and patting you on the back and saying, great job. Uh, and on your way to attracting death. Amen. Good morning, Peggy. You could be on your way to hell with a cross around your neck, thinking you're all good. It's all good in the hood and be out of the will of God. I came this morning to get you to consider your ways. This time in history, this dispensation of God's grace is about to wind up. And there are some people that have this much time 
to get it right with God before they go eat, spend eternity um, reliving whatever kept them out of heaven forever. I'll give you an example. I've seen a vision of gang members shooting at each other. This is how they lived on uh, uh, when they were on the earth. They shot at each other. And in hell, they were shooting at each other. One would fall because he was wounded or dead, but then he'd rise back up and they start to fight all over again. The scene replays over and over for, for eternity. I, I seen uh, uh, the, uh, what happens to abortionists, the, the doctors, as well as those who are habitual baby slayers. There's a box. Uh, I can't tell you how big the box is. All I can say is it's big enough to fit a human in because you have your own personal hell. And there were pine needles that looked like you ever seen someone getting acupuncture? Well, imagine that times a billion and they're being tortured with those because that's what happens to the babies when they're aborted. They try to clean it up and call it reproductive rights, but what about the rights of the child? But this is not about that. Let me move forward. Romans 11.29. Romans 11.29, King James Version. Romans 11.29 in the King James, and it reads this way. For the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. For the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Oh, it's too late. I should have did it years ago. For the gifts of God and callings are without repentance. Let me give it to you another way. The New King James says it this way. For the gifts and the calling of God is irrevocable. In other words... It doesn't matter if you change your mind about it. It doesn't matter if you wound up marrying a rich spouse or you're in a great job that's paying you more money than you've ever been paid and you figure, well, you're all good. No, for the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. So if he called you to do something, he never changed his mind about it. Let he who have ears, let them hear. It doesn't matter who came into the picture. A lot of people pray to God for a husband and when he shows up you don't see him in church no more mm. it makes you wonder did God send him was that Ishmael instead of Isaac that he you have ears let them hear let me move forward this morning when God called you here's an example to sing in the choir but you got in a pulpit you wanted to preach because it was more glamorous, it seems more powerful. You think the will of God is done because you're still in ministry. But I submit to you this morning, not so. For the gift and callings of God is irrevocable. If he called you to be an usher in the church and you're walking, uh, doing the parking lot ministry or whatever case may be, because you will... The gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. The allure of success can trip people up. Um, especially if they find themselves uh, satisfying a, a natural need like bills or, or um, any kind of financial obligation. And... It scratches that itch, so therefore they figure, well, I've arrived. The gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. There's another hindrance to fulfilling your dream, to walking in your God-given purpose. Like Joseph, you make the mistake and you mention it to the wrong person. You make the mistake and you let them know what God told you when he didn't tell you to tell nobody yet. The title of this morning's message is Exposing the Dream Killers. Exposing the Dream Killers. Joseph told his brothers, the ones whose house he was raised up in, about what God showed him. And you know what they did? They ended up trying to kill him. They sold him into slavery. Out of jealousy, out of envy. Many times when people are not doing what they were called to do, they get mad at you when you start talking about doing what God called you to do. Amen. Some people like Joseph are told they have no purpose. Just keep doing what you've been doing. 
uh, they're told that dream's unattainable. Why don't you just keep doing this and keep doing that? Don't be ridiculous. Uh, someone gets uh, gets married uh, and now um, expected to abandon their dreams. A, a, a woman who always wanted to sing and she gets married to a man who don't want her to sing, wants her to stay in the house and stay barefoot and pregnant. Abandoning her dreams. Listen, on the earth, she has a responsibility under God to submit herself unto God. But if he's not a godly man, it don't apply. Because a godly man wants you to do what God calls you to do. Preach, black man, preach. Amen. See, another hindrance to walking in uh, the manifestation of your purpose is when you get a really good job with benefits. It's the highest paid job you ever have and you feel trapped because how are you going to meet, uh, meet your financial obligations? How are you going to pay your bills if you leave your job? But your job is standing in the way. You can't go to church on Sunday because you're too tired from working six days, 12 hours a day. You can't go to no uh, crusades. You can't go to, when you get home, you don't have time to pray or cook for the kids because uh, you're too tired when you get home. You tired, the dog tired, the cat tired, the goldfish tired. And if you got roaches, they tired too. Why? Because you just don't have anything left because the job that you are trading time for money, which can, at a whim, fire you for anything at any time, has become your God. Exposing the dream killers. Amen. Now, obviously, we only scratch the surface of identifying dream killers, but let me scratch a little bit more. The dishwasher at a restaurant has dreams of owning the restaurant one day, but the dishwasher on the side of him said, you're dreaming. Just, you'll never be more than a dishwasher like me. Are you listening to me? Uh, the husband who tells uh, his wife, who's a full-time mom, stop talking about opening up a daycare center. Just stay here and take care of your own kids. Dream killer. Are you listening to me? The woman who's a great cook. Seen Martha Stewart on TV and sparked something in her. I can do that. I want to open a restaurant. Won't you go open that kitchen in there and just make me something to eat and be quiet? Dream killer. Identifying your dream killers is crucial. Because as long as there's breath studying in your body, God is holding you responsible for doing what he said, not what man said. Because the devil has a way of making things comfortable when it looks like you're about to walk in your purpose he'll he'll ease up off you a little bit so you can think well this is god leading you to stay where you're at when god wants to call you higher 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 let me give you the last scripture then i'm gonna let you go philippians 1 6 and don't forget to share this message someone needs this philippians 1 6 for all you people who think, well, I should have did it right out of high school. I should have did it right out of college. I should have did it before I had my first kiss. Whatever the case may be. Philippians 1.6 says, being confident of this very thing. That he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Which means that as long as you're breathing, you still have an opportunity to do this. Amen. It's going to take God's help. It's going to take supernatural help. Would it have been easier if you did it earlier? Yes, it would have been. But the great part is now you know when it comes to pass, it had to be God's help. Amen. Because it's going to take supernatural help to get you there. Because supernatural help kept you from there. Demonic supernatural help. Amen. Don't get into this uh, idea or mindset that if you have determination and willpower and you really believe you'll get it done, it doesn't work that way because the enemy will wear you out in that arena. Get in that God arena where he says the battle is not yours, but it's his. Amen. If he whispered it to you, he meant it. The gifts and callings of God 
or without repentance. If he gave you a dream about it, and you always wanted to do it as a little girl, the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. It's going to need you, the cooperation with the Spirit of God, because see, in God's mind, it's already complete. It's already finished work. That's when you have to learn how to pray. Our God, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. In other words, that aspect of the kingdom that you're supposed to rule and have jurisdiction and dominion on in the earth realm. You needed to come and meet you here on the earth where you can still do something about it. And that'll be his will be done on the earth. And another way to look at it is what are you made from the dust of the ground in the earth? As it is in heaven. Are right, you listening to me? But what about my job? Give us this day our daily bread. Are right, you listening to me? What about what my uncle said? Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. But I don't want to do and he will direct your path. Listen to the word of God. Amen. Mm. Exposing the dream killers. Exposing dream killers, a lot of times when, you, when I get silent, I'm not doing a Joe Biden freezing. I'm not Mr. Freeze. I'm hearing from God. And when you're talking, you don't always hear. So I get quiet. Let me pray. There's an anointing that's flowing this morning to expose the dream killers in your life, the things that have been holding you back that you can still do something about, but you just don't know you can. If I have your permission to release this anointing concerning you, to open your eyes to whom you need to cut off in your life, what you need to stop, so the dream killer in your life is Release from its assignment, because you know it's a devil behind all trouble. Then go ahead and post pray for me, prophet. I'll wait for just a second. No chotopo Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Taka, meaning the keeper. Some, I feel, I feel virtue going out of me. Someone's pulling on my spirit right now. Amen. This word hit home with somebody. Amen. Oh, Shataka, Mananakapa, I see you first lady. Oh, Tananaki, Prabhi, Nananakapa. For everyone who posts Pray For Me Prophet, whether it's right now or when they see this broadcast, heaven has taken notes. They keep great records. Heaven's taken notes. The angels of the Lord have taken notes in this prayer. This declaration will be serving as a eviction notice in the spirit to everything that has worked against your dream to everyone who has worked against your dream don't be surprised when certain folks start treating you funny because that might be god working you're supposed to get annoyed with them they're supposed to get annoyed with you why because the spirit that lies in you and the spirit in them are arch enemies how can two walk together unless they agree? There are some people who are comfortable being a failure. Are you listening to me? That's why they consistently vote for a certain party because they figure, well, they're going to give me so-and-so. Buying your silence, buying your compliance. I serve a God that says, I am responsible for whom I endorse. Amen. Although... In order to maintain my 501c3 status, I can't endorse from the pulpit. 
But as a as a man of God, I tell you to vote your conscience. Mm. Not consideration. Vote your principle. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, stretch your hands towards this, this, your camera, uh, uh, towards the screen, I mean, as a point of contact. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that those lingering, delaying, hindrance, bound spirits, those evil dark lords, that would attempt to separate you from your purpose by using people, by using places, by using things. I decree and declare that the scales fall off your eyes and you not be moved by what you've seen, but you'll be moved by what he said. For the gifts of God are without repentance. The gifts of God are irrevocable. So in the name of Jesus, I release you to walk in your purpose in the name of Jesus. I release you to walk in your God-given gift. And I decree and I declare that every resource that's necessary for you to walk in your gift, to run your race and finish your course, will begin to manifest and you will draw it like a magnet to you in Jesus' name. The Spirit of God will lead you for the for the voice of the Lord you know and the stranger you will not follow. And all that believe this that I receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. Well, God bless you in the name of Jesus. And if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to remind you that while you can still make the choice now, you better make it. Hell is too hot and eternity is too long for you to go there. Regardless of what you ever heard or thought you knew about hell is worse than that. Regardless of, of the folks that you, you see uh, in um, pictures with angel wings on their back like they went to heaven when they were living like hellions here on earth. Just because they were famous does not mean they went to heaven. As a matter of fact, there's more of a chance that they went to hell. Whether they be gospel uh, artists or not. Because the Bible says you'll know them by their fruit. Amen. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or you want to have a rededication right now, let me tell you what the Bible says. It says there's no other name under heaven by which men can be saved. That's number one. Which means that Buddha, Confucius, Muhammad, and other men can save you because number one, they had the same bloodline as Adam. And number two, they're not God. I can't even save you but I can lead you to the Savior, which is Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Anointed One, Jesus the one who died, went to hell, so you wouldn't have to, took the keys of hell, death, and the grave from the enemy, and now you have an option to exercise if you so desire. The Holy Ghost, God the Father, God the Son, they're gentlemen. They don't force you to do anything. Some religions want you to die for them, oh God died for you. Amen. So if you want to serve that God, the God that can uh, has already prepared a way for you to come and spend eternity with him rather than going to hell and spend eternity with your torturous captors, reminding you eternally of how stupid you are for listening to them, then you want to uh, sincerely from your heart pray this prayer. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. I know that Jesus died on the cross for my sin. I believe that on the third day, he was raised out of hell and now sits at the right hand of the Father. I want that Jesus to come into my heart and save me and deliver me. And I will live for him as he shows me how. I denounce Satan and everything he stands for. In Jesus' name, receive me now. Amen. Have you prayed that prayer sincerely from your heart? Then your name is now written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And your journey begins.
for some, your journey continues because it was a rededication. But I want to remind you that God is not mocked. Whatever a man soweth, he shall also reap. If you sow a certain lifestyle into this earth realm, you're going to reap it from this earth realm. I never heard nobody say it, but let me say it like that. Because hell has been even scientifically found in the center of the earth. So if you sow to earthly things, you're going to reap er earthly things, which is demonic. But if you sow to the spirit, the heavenly things, you'll reap heavenly things. Let he who have ears, let them hear. This um, Sabbath Sunday was sponsored by Precious Products by Sonia. This morning, God, thank God for her. If it wasn't for her and and the Domi partners who consistently give, um, since I don't work a uh, regular nine to five and all I do is work for God, um, I am subject to the people that he blesses us to bless and those who contribute because they see value in this ministry amen god bless you um some exciting news this coming weekend uh our baby boy king titus uh will be joining the stage with kevin roldan a colombian international superstar actually it's king's record actually uh, featuring kevin roldan who has over 2.9 billion followers, over 11 million Instagram followers. King Titus and Kevin will be performing uh, the remix of Party for the BET Explosion uh, this coming weekend in Los Angeles. If you're in that area, go through my page or go to his Instagram page to my TikTok and get the information and go ahead and, 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 and support. Uh, King Titus also is doing big things with the Shredded by King uh, program. We are very proud of him. That's why we invested in it. Amen. Shredded by King. Uh, he's a certified personal fitness trainer and people are already calling from all over the country saying, I want to hire him for a weekend to come in and teach a class at my spot. I want to hire him to come do this. I want to buy the course. Whatever the case may be, y'all go ahead and y'all support. Amen. <music>
Amen. Well, God bless you. That's your radical prophet, Dwayne O'Mai, and I will see you tonight. It's the Faith Building Bundle. Counting Your Blessings Journal by Arthur Sonia Lee Robinson. Keep a record of the blessings of God on your life as a praise and thanksgiving to Him. Also, your gifts making room for you. Coloring and sketchbook for adults with positive affirmations to build your faith. By Prophet Dwayne Omar. Write the vision and make it plain. Arthur's Dwayne Omar and First Lady are now on Amazon. The Faith Building Bundle from Prophet Dwayne Omar and First Lady Sonia Lee Robinson. Dwayne Omar's new ebook, From Foreclosure to Fortune, is an enlightening guide. This comprehensive ebook not only offers valuable tips and strategies for finding and claiming unclaimed surplus funds, but also provides a detailed explanation of navigating the country's judicial and non judicial foreclosure processes. By understanding these intricate procedures, readers can effectively turn challenges into profitable financial endeavors. With practical advice and step-by-step -step guidance, this book empowers readers to leverage unclaimed funds for financial recovery and success. Download your ebook or audiobook today. Ready to bridge the gap between daydreaming and living the dream? Join producer Dwayne Omar at Dwayne Omar Beats for a game-changing mentorship and consulting service. Get exclusive access to top producers, writers, and entertainment experts who've worked with legends like Janet Jackson, Chris Brown, Justin Timberlake, Beyonce, Notorious Big, The Jacksons, Ralph Tresvant, Earth, Wind & Fire, Christina Aguilera, Jamie Foxx, King Titus, and many more. Stay tuned for enrollment details and get ready to turn your dreams into reality. Coming soon, The Music Bible, From Daydreaming to Living the Dream.